Welcome to the County Area Group's layout, a model of the station at Eridge, which is in East Sussex, around 35 miles south of London. The station was built with the London Brighton South Coast Railway, and although it was in a very rural area with little or no nearby settlement, it was quite busy from the start, being at a crossroads on the Brighton system. To the south of Eridge, at Redgate Mill Junction, the line splits. One route goes to Brighton itself via Lewis, while the other heads for Eastbourne via Polgate. To the north lies another junction at Birchton, where the line branches one way to Tunbridge Wells in London, while the other also east to London, but this time via Oxted. Slightly further north still, a cross-country route ambled its way to three bridges via East Grinstead. One result of this complexity was that some trains in both directions split or combined to Eridge, and spare locomotives were often stabled there. This obviously makes for some interesting operational opportunities, and we hope to represent these workings in the future. There was also a small goods shed and associated sidings, which were shunted by the local goods train. We've chosen the 1950s, early 60s as our modelling period, around the time that steam was giving way to diesel. It's a slightly generous time frame, but it allows the use of some locomotive classes which were closely associated with the line, but which had all gone by the mid-50s. To avoid too many glaring inconsistencies, the plan for exhibitions is to run two separate sequences, one steam and one diesel, with a transition sequence between the two. Those with long memories might remember our first attempt at modelling Eridge, which had a brief career on the exhibition circuit an embarrassing number of years ago. Our excuse for still being engaged on what looks like the same project is that the baseboards on that first effort proved its undoing. As time went on, they started to warp ever more spectacularly. We tried all sorts of increasingly desperate ways of getting them back into some sort of order, but in the end, we were forced to accept that they were beyond salvation. So we salvaged what we could, mainly the buildings, gave the rest a decent burial, and started again on Eridge Mark II. The scenic section of the new layout, like the old one, is 26 feet long and comprises three eight-foot sections plus a two-foot one for the southern end point work. What has changed significantly is the construction. Each section is now of monocoque design, supported on trestles, which also provide the pillars for the cantilevered lighting, which allows uninterrupted views of the scenic section from the public viewing side. At each end is a six-foot fiddle yard of similar construction and designed around train cassettes. A high-level storage shelf stores the cassettes, complete with trains, between movements. As this is a layout under construction, development is still going on. Track work is complete and the hard landscaping is all but done with just the area around the station bridge to be blended in. Work has started on the soft landscaping, mainly using static grass. We're especially pleased with the look of the standard southern style of lineside fencing, which uses 3D printed posts and laboriously installed wires. Trees are being built from scratch, based around annealed steel wire cable and the methods described in Gordon Gravitt's books. Many of the buildings are those salvaged from Eridge Mark I, though most have been reworked and updated. The station footbridge is a lot more complicated than it looks. There's barely a right angle in the whole thing and is a suitably complex 3D print. We got to this just in time, incidentally. The real footbridge was demolished only a few weeks ago. The water tower is nearly complete and combines a base which is built conventionally in plastic card and a 3D printed tank. The platform canopies are structurally complete and now await painting and weathering. For the platforms themselves, we have designed 3D printed brick edging strips, which will be applied before the surfaces are painted. The mainline signalling is well on the way to being completed structurally. The 10 ground signals have all been designed and printed in brass, but have yet to be built. The plan is to make them operational. A temporary control panel is being used for the time being to operate the point work through simple changeover switches, but a much more ambitious panel 
has been designed incorporating sequence control, track routing and signal control features. To avoid all this leading to an excessive amount of inter-baseboard wiring, a CAN bus system is being developed. This should allow everything we have in mind to be controlled with just six wires crossing each baseboard joint. Due to the design of the new control panel, new levers have been designed and etches. They are based on the Westinghouse Type L lever, which were not used at the real airage, but do suit the design of the control panel. A couple of prototypes have been etched and built, and only some minor tweaks to the design are needed before we can start production in earnest. Mock-ups of the resulting control panel are looking promising. As for low and rolling stock, you can never have too much, but we now have enough to present a respectable sequence of trains without resorting to anything too unlikely. So you won't see any A4s diverted via Eridge because of a possession on the East Coast main line. And while there are some things it would be nice to have, especially to strengthen the passenger stock, there isn't anything that's too obviously lacking. So from all the team at CAG and Eridge, we hope you enjoy the following video.
Yep.